Sadly, due to some personal reasons, today I will not be able to release any uh, replica tank pack. I uh, will be releasing one tomorrow instead. But I decided to just take a little bit of a look of something that is not quite legal in build techniques, but at the same time it kind of is. Namely, the use of file editing to change a build to have just all Im yeah, like this impossible capabilities. And for that, I have this task bat right here that, well, it's 66 tons, yet <laughs> it has an insane turret reverse. It has an insane reload. Uh, I actually decided to lower the effect volume here because the vertical uh, drive would have a very, very high pitch noise if the movement speed is as high as it is on this one. So I decided to turn it off to save you all's ears. And instead we got this basically fully stabilized effect of the turret. And while some of that stuff is also in the suspension, I have not yet learned enough about the suspension details to really make a video on that. So right now we're going to be talking about how to kind of cheat the effect of a stabilizer and autoloader through file manipulation. And maybe actually some other stuff here as well. That also enables this thing to have an as high mobility as it has. So for that, we are going to be using uh, any kind of notepad, really. I myself use Notepad++. Uh, but as soon as you can open the blueprint with just any notepad editor, you will be able to see the blueprint file like this. You can see some pretty simple stuff so far, if you are a coder. But of course, if you're not a coder, it will all be very confusing. So there are also actually some stuff in here, such as the hull the turret, tracks, the engine, and so on. And if actually, if you notice right here on right next to the engines, you might notice that cylinders is claimed to number 30. So even though I go to, if I go to my ability tab and check the engine advanced tab, uh, this engine has only sort of 7 and 16 cylinders. But it will have like an absolutely insane amount of horsepower. And if I were to decide to lower this down to 16 and save the file and load it right here. So you can see here it's over 3100. If I load the file again, it's going to be down to 1700 if it's actually, then it actually has 16. So I managed to just double this thing's horsepower by changing the amount of cylinders here. Which means that I actually can just reach a, just a higher top speed. And you can see here the, the internal space just suddenly went away as well. It's gonna, it's gonna be filled up again once I go and double up the amount of cylinders again, basically. So the amount of torque here exerted, again, it's massive. It's giving even a 66 ton tank a high speed. So that's the first thing you can do with the file changing system here. You can also go above the 5 liter displacement, which actually does less than you want it to because it also lowers your maximum RPM so it doesn't do as much as you want it to. So you generally use this to increase your cylinders above the normal amount. You have a transmission, uh, stuff to your forwards and rear uh, where to drive stuff, but you don't really need that to change that or your I feel like blueprint. Now here if you actually have the elevation torque, which here is six is six thousand, which will translate to the uh six point oh oh kilonewtons right here. Sadly, due to it being the mid-war era is limited to six thousand, I have no possibility of raising that. Even if I raise it to a higher number, let's say uh twenty-five thousand, I'll save it. If I will load the blueprint and then save it back up, you will see that it's going back down to 6,000 because there's just a hard limit in the game here right now. But there are some funny things that you can do with cannons, namely the shell length and diameter you can put to above the normal limits. So just for fun, you can actually just take a look at this gun right here. I am going to put a zero right next to it. And if I reload to blueprint, it's gotta be looking very, very stupid. Of course, the internal space used is going to be quite a problem. So, yeah, I'm gonna put this back to 125. 
right here. And just keep it a normal place, basically. But you can do a lot. You can also make the shell longer to give you a higher velocity. But the biggest thing that you can do inside of here is crew allocation. So right here you can see the crew are setting up. So the first one is going to be commander, then it's going to be driver, then the gunner, then the loader. And they've allocated 3 square meters, 1 square meter, 4 square meters, and 4 square meters right here. So let's say uh, I'm going to reduce all of these to 1. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to load the group end. I am going to have the normal capabilities of this tank. And uh, there are some actually some side things here that are not affected by the sound settings, so I do apologize for that. They're sounding a bit weird and going to be a bit annoying. But yeah, this tank, while still being as mobile, it just lost its stabilizer effect pretty much entirely because the gunner just doesn't have the gun elevation anymore. And the reload has also become three times as long. And that's the big difference. So if I go back this one up to three again, that's my commander. So you're gonna if I gonna open this, you'll see my hole's gonna be filled back up. My turret is still empty, but they're only getting a faster reload by quite a margin. And my turret is also a lot faster in rotation as well. And this is already how you're gonna get a very big advantage in tanks is just simply by increasing the uh, benefit of the uh, commander alone will give you just use benefits in the efficiency of your crew and what they can do and the driver actually matters like not at all here but the gunner and the loader both matter actually quite a decent amount not nearly as much as the commander but they can give the tank an insane ability to just fire just rapidly and have an extreme turret to traverse overall. And again, this is not quite legal with normal builds. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't consider it legal, but at the same time, if you can design your tank to have this extra space, because you are sacrificing stuff for this. You are having to build a much larger tank to fit this stuff in. But right now, giving your increased size for those three rolls are a little bit overpowered right now. Like, it's, it's not entirely without sacrifice. Again, a uh, larger build is much more difficult to get up to armor spec. But at the same time, fuel tanks are a thing that exists. And you can build your entire tank around fuel tanks and protect it through that way. And that's pretty much how this stuff works. Um, yeah, you have to kind of maximize your internal volume, giving a lot of building restrictions, but you do get a lot of raw power and capabilities out of a design like this. And sadly, the uh, side here isn't really designed to take such high speeds, so it does create a little bit of flicker, so I do apologize for any uh, one that is sensitive toward that. And yeah, let's just see how stable this gun side is, even like driving over kind of this stuff. You can see it's just pretty much entirely stable. It really just doesn't care at all and just immediately turns around if it needs to respond to any uh, like shreds. This just immediately is able to do so. And of course, this build, because of its fire rate, is also capable of dealing with the fuel barrel ear rate quite decently because it can just pinpoint a target, just right here, for example, and just shoot it like three times at the same spot and make sure all the array is gone. And you're gonna just dig through it real quick. So yeah, that's what you can do with uh, changing up stuff in here. But there's also some miscellaneous stuff that you can do here. Uh, namely, like the external data right here. Which is actually like um, stuff that is related to the parts that you're placing on top of it, which has like rotational data inside of it. And this is like really complex stuff, but in theory you can actually change the rotation of your parts through here to manually ma manipulate any place parts on top of here, which will give you like very nice control of art building. But that stuff is kind of too advanced and out of the scope of this video. So for now I'm gonna keep it at this. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you guys learned something. And yeah, 
Uh, if you guys actually want to know where to find these kind of blueprints, uh, you're gonna go have to go to your documents, then your games, then do sprocket, factions, then whatever faction you're working in, blueprints, vehicles, and that's where you can find these files. You have to want to uh, edit the OO3 file and here. You can see I can edit it with Notepad++, which will result in this for me opening up. But otherwise, you're going to have to just edit it with normal, regular old Notepad. Uh, you would have to open it with, and for me, I use a file identifier, so it doesn't quite work with normal, like, well, how normal Windows works. But yeah, you kind of want to open it with a file editor. And then you can uh, just see all of this data. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys learned something, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.